hi everyone so welcome to this brand new lesson in this lesson i'm gonna show you how you can get started with aws dynamodb services a dynamodb services are no sql services you might know about mysql and sql services so those are relational database but dynamodb is no sql that's mean a non relational database a dynamodb that's mean no sql and sql databases are used to store the information and in general we store our data in a table and in the same way you can also do with the dynamodb and uh, this is fully managed by aws and amazon and uh, what is advantage of this dynamodb over sql databases these dynamodb services are really very fast and high performance and they are pretty much scalable all right uh, scalable means let's say if you have created a table today and you want to add more columns and more data a new type of data in that table it will be really easy to add in dynamodb but in mysql you have to create a new column thereafter there will be a lot of overhead processing that is why this dynamodb nowadays is being preferred or any other type of uh, no sql databases so let's go ahead and see what are other important parameters of this no sql so once you open this dynamodb if you do not have any table in your aws account then you will be having here create table option and if you click on this table you will be seeing there uh, all right a table which is already present there but if you want to delete it you can simply delete it by clicking there all right and thereafter it will ask you to type there delete all right so this table is deleted and in the dashboard you will be getting something like this one if you do not have any table like this create a table otherwise getting started guide etc so what you can do the process with dynamodb is you need to create a first table thereafter you put some item and query the item which is already present in the table thereafter finally in the third step you can monitor the table for any performance if any read write overhead is occurring there all right so thereafter you see a create table let's go ahead and create this table by clicking on create table it will ask few information here like what is going to be a table name so for a table name i'm gonna say here let's say a contact info all right and then it says that what is going to be a primary key so a primary key i'm going to be uh, i going to make it email all right because a name could be duplicate for many people but email will be always unique so i'm going to put here uh, this partition key as primary key email thereafter i'm also going to put here a sort key all right that's mean a secondary key so a secondary key i'm going to put here a company name if you want you can put here all right so this is company name all right and there you can select the parameters this email is a string otherwise if you want to select it you can select it as a number as well of course email is not a number and uh, there you have this company name this company name is also a string so there is a primary key and this one is a secondary key which you can also say that this one is sort key and uh, now let's go ahead and do here a default table setting otherwise if you deselect this one you will be getting here what is going to be a secondary index and what is this secondary index it allows you to perform queries on uh, attributes that are not part of table's primary key that means that whenever you are doing any operation we can simply do the operation with these primary key but if we include here a secondary index so with this one we can also perform operation by assuming that the secondary key is also sorry this secondary index is also primary key and this read write capacity says that how much read write throughput we are going to provide to this uh, dynamodb and do remember if you put here high cost read write then uh, then you might get charged for that one so you have to pay attention on this one 
so it says that if we put here read write capacity 5 so estimated cost will be around uh, re estimated cost will be around here 2.91 dollar per month all right so this one is provisioned capacity do remember this one is provisioned capacity provisioned capacity means it will start with uh, all right one uh, a smaller throughput thereafter it will increase it all right there is demand on demand will will be like that uh, it will create a throughput as much as it needed all right thereafter uh, read capacity i'm gonna deselect it all right that's mean auto scaling and thereafter i'm gonna put here one and there is one all right so one read capacity and one write capacity will be only will be costing us only 0 0.6 dollar per month all right do remember when you start this DynamoDB, it is not going to cost anything because there is, uh, I think, the millions of throughput is free. So you can use it without any problem. It is not going to cost you anything here. All right. When when you will be doing a lots of processing with the DynamoDB in your production, only then you will be uh, build. Otherwise, it's okay. Thereafter, you can click on this create. Then this is going to create a table for you. After some time, your table will be created here. This contact input table is there. And uh, you can get the information about this table. If you click on this overview tab, it says that this table name and uh, ARN. So ARN is not valid as of now here. All right, other information is available here. All right, here, final ARN. All right, so this one is a final ARN. We'll, we will be needing this uh, Amazon resource name if we do any operation at our AWS Lambda or if we perform any operation uh, using some programming all right any programming language so this table will be identified by this ARN number all right you can see items if there is any items present in your table it says that we do not have any item present in our table we have here email and uh, company name all right now how you can how, how you can create an item you can simply click on here create an item in this email you can say uh, you can put your email like this one and uh, then in the company name you can put the company name thereafter you can click on ok so what do you get here you get there is email and company name and simply you can once again put there let's say i'm gonna email so email cannot be same as always there i have udemy at the rate uh, kgptalkie.com thereafter i'm gonna again put here a kgp talkie and if you click on here you will get append option all right and then you will get here again insert option all right if you click on append a binary there you will be seeing there another field is added that is here uh, uh, important part in this table we had created this table with only email and company name but now we are getting here another field as well so in this field i'm going to provide here a name and uh, the name I'm going to provide, let's say, Lakshmikanth. All right, let's go ahead and save it. Now, what do you see here a difference? A difference is that we had created our table with email and company name. But later, we had also added another column simply without any problem. So you can see how simple this is. But if you have worked on SQL databases, you you might know that this is really going to be very difficult if you add another column if you want to alter your final database that is why this no sql database is nowadays getting um, you know getting in limelight so with this matrix you can get the information how much uh, read write throughput is being used for this table currently we do not have much throughput and there is no throttle so throttle says that uh, okay read write capacity has been reached whatever we have assigned here all right so these are the uh, the table information i mean uh, the metrics 
read write matrix you can get to know that if your table is performing bad or performing good and uh, if it is performing bad you can increase your throughput read capacity and write capacity there you can also set any alarm if you want to set like uh, like read capacity unit limit all right so there will be an alarm any time when read capacity goes above of 0.8 for 5 minutes then what it will do it will create an alarm and then it will send you an email that your throughput is increased all right you can simply select it and then edit these or create this alarm there is capacity so this capacity we have already defined that if you want to change this capacity you can simply change it from here there is index so we don't have any index here global table is there all right so we do not have made it as a global table thereafter if you want to create any backup for this table you can simply create a backup so all the information will be backed up here thereafter all other information you can get from here all right perfect now let's say if you want to if you want to search any information here if you have a large table and you want to search it how you can search it you can search it from here there is a query and a scan so with the query you have to provide here a primary key and then the company name with that query let's say if you want to get all the information which is having email email is equal to info at the rate kgp talkie then you can get that all right like this one so there you have got it and then search it so it says that okay there is only one email now you have to pay attention here what's the difference between this query and a scan query is like you have to provide a primary key all right it's like a filtering and a sorting it, it's like a filtering actually let's say if you have a large data set and you want to get particular company name then you can simply provide here this uh, partition key all right so with the partition key we are having this email so it's always it's, it's always required and apart from that if you want to provide a sort key so based on this sort key you can also uh, uh, you know uh, sort it let's say if you provide here a kgp talkie it's not there you can also get it so what's the difference it is going to create here let's say if you have many email here and uh, let's say you have here a gmail etc and then you have a company name where i work then if you want to search with my email and company name all right then you will get other information all right perfect thereafter if you want to search it with a scan so a scan returns the result all right all the available results so it do not perform any sorting although you can add here a filtering based on the attributes like let's say if you want to uh, provide here a name attribute thereafter you want to get any name which is equal to lakshmikant then you will be getting this information all right so with the query you need this primary key but with the scan you don't need any key all right you can do a filtering but with the scan it starts scanning your uh, table and it will show you all the information and the data available in your table all right perfect so this is all about in this lesson thanks a lot for watching it i'll see you next lesson